So, Steve, uh, can you tell me about your uh, where you work and what you do? Yeah, I'm Steve Rick. I'm the chief economist for CUNA Mutual Group. I've been there about two and a half years after working for CUNA for over 22 years. And what do you see for the uh, outlook for interest rates right now? Uh, as you know, the jobs report comes out this Friday. So if we get another 200,000 jobs created in the month of February, we could see the uh, Federal Reserve actually move interest rates on March 15th. That's their next FOMC meeting. And we do believe the Federal Reserve is going to raise short-term interest rates, the Fed funds rate, by three times this year, about 25 basis points each. So right now it's around 0.7%. So it's going to take us over 1% this year. And then we expect for the next two years, they're going to continue to keep going up by about three quarters of a percent each year. Uh, their goal is to hit 3%. They believe that's what's called the neutral interest rate, you know, where it's not trying to stimulate the economy or contract the economy. So their goal is to get to three. We're at 0.7 today. We've got a ways to go to get there. But the Fed wants to do it. They believe we're approaching full employment or potential GDP, it's called. So they want to get that rate up. But the question is, how fast is it going to go? And how might this affect loans at credit unions? Uh, well, the big side is uh, also what's ha happening is long-term interest rates are also going up. And of course, when short-term rates go up, they typically push up long-term interest rates. And we saw what some people like to call the Trump bump. After he got elected, we saw long-term interest rates, specifically the 10-year Treasury interest rate, rise about one percentage point, which is very quick in a very short period of time, uh, mainly because there's a rotation out of the bond market of money. Money came out of bonds and into stocks, and we all know what's happened with stock prices in the last two months. We've reached record highs you know, week after week, day after day. So money's coming out of bonds and stocks, but that means the interest rates in the bond markets are going up, which means mortgage interest rates at credit units are also going up, which in turn pushes down refinance activity at credit unions. They're getting you know, less refi activity, less fees on that, and of course less gains on sales of mortgages if they're trying to sell that off into the secondary market like Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. So we are, basically we kind of call this the normalization of interest rates. We're going back to normal rates after having these abnormally low interest rates for the last eight years. Do you think deposit rates will follow the loan rates? Yeah, typically um, when the Federal Reserve raises their Fed funds rate, credit unions raise their CD rate almost one for one with it. There's a little bit of lag and a little bit. So for example, if rates go up 1% on the Fed funds rate, credit unions typically raise their rates by 0.75%. So CD rates will respond, will start to go up. Uh, the other big major account are money market accounts. We believe their deposit rates will go up by about half of what any uh, change in the Fed funds rate is. So once again, Fed funds rates go up 1%, expect money market rates to go up half. Uh, for the other big account, regular savings accounts, we don't expect much movement there at all. Uh, they may go up just a little bit over the next few years. That's typically rate insensitive uh, type of money and credit unions will want to raise that rates just because they don't want their net interest margins to be compressed too much. But uh, they are going to go up. We, like I said, we are normalizing our interest rates finally after eight years of emergency low interest rates. What else is in store for the economy this year? Uh, basically, this year we could actually hit what economists call full employment or kind of the uh, full utilization of all our labor resources, all our capital resources, you know, capital, think of your factories and equipment and all that. So we're going to reach potential output, which is, you know, for an economist, it's kind of an exciting thing. We get all like say, hey, we're actually at the perfect Goldilocks level of economic activity, where it's not too hot, leading to inflation, or not too cold, leading to unemployment. We're kind of at that perfect zone, and we're going to hit that this year, you know, because the unemployment rate's at 4.8%, uh, our what's called the output gap is only only about minus 1%, meaning we're producing about 99% of what we should be producing. So, but we got a little bit more to go. There's still some factories that are not running at their normal production capacity, but we're getting close. And so this is going to be a nice year for the economy, which is going to provide a tailwind for credit units. You know, we expect another year of over 10% loan growth, which will be the fourth consecutive year of double digit loan growth for the credit unit industry on average. And that hasn't happened in over 30 years. So I like to call these like the halcyon times for credit unions. Halcyon meaning, you know, it's prosperous, relatively calm, compared to what we had, you know, seven, eight years ago with the great uh, recession uh, hitting us and, you know, uh, lending growth actually shrinking at credit unions, which is hard, ne hardly ever happens. The last time it happened was 1943, the last time we actually saw credit union loan balances drop. So it was a unique event that happened in 2008, 2009. We're in a lot better place today than we were eight years ago. 